everyone, welcome back to Motorcycle.com and this is our first ride on the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT. Now, if you've been watching Mo for a little while, you might have uh, come across the 900cc-ish middleweight uh, naked bike test we did recently and the winner of that test was the Yamaha MT-09. That bike is the basis for what this Tracer 9 GT is all about. And if you have been watching Yamaha's progression of what was then the FJ09 uh, and then the Tracer 900 after that, this is the next evolution of that model. With the Tracer 9 GT though, this is an all new bike. It, it might look very similar to the Tracer 900 of the past, but Yamaha says this is all new from the ground up new motorcycle. Uh, which was kind of designed to look very similar to the previous models, Tristan 100 in the past, but we got to start with that engine. This is an 890cc three-cylinder engine, not the 847cc of the Tracer 900 of years gone by. So with that you get obviously more power. We had the MT-09 on the dyno recently and that made about 106-ish horsepower to the rear wheel and I think like just under 60 pound-feet of torque uh, to the rear wheel. And so it's a pretty healthy engine. It goes along really well. Um, but you know this is an all-new bike because from side to side, top to bottom, front to back, there's just little differences and Yamaha says there's basically like very few shared parts between this Tracer 9 GT and the Tracer 900 before it. I think it was single digits, the number of shared parts the two bikes have. It's an all new frame, it's an all new swing arm. And in fact, now the swing arm is, is bolstered because it's now mounted in between the frame rails, whereas before it was mounted externally on the outside of the frame, just for a little bit added rigidity for both load carrying capacity and for handling characteristics, solo and with either a passenger or with the uh, bags filled up. But uh, this Tracer 9 GT, Yamaha says, is built for sport touring, which means pavement only. The adventure bike market has kind of been infiltrating and kind of tiptoeing the line of what sport touring bikes were kind of, and still doing today. With the Tracer 9 GT though, they're there is no premise of off-road capability. This is all about sport touring. And what makes a good sport touring motorcycle is obviously you have to be able to sport ride really well, but also you got to tour really well. So on the sporting side of things, let's get back into that. Obviously you've got that 890cc three-cylinder engine, but you've also got now the electronics package, more or less, from the R1, six-axis IMU, uh, slide control, lift control, traction control, and the IMU is actually 50% smaller and 50% lighter than the one on the R1. Cool features to have, of course, and that also gets you uh, these different features like cornering ABS. Yamaha has their own funky terminology for it, but it's effectively two braking modes uh, for the ABS. You've got their cornering ABS and you've got just standard ABS. You can switch between either function. There's so much to go through. You've got these cool two uh, TFT displays that are split in half. The left side shows your speedometer, your revs, uh, basic bike functions, and then the right side display shows coolant temp and ambient temp, stuff like that. And you can filter between both screens and change both menus to show almost any variation that you want. With an IMU, of course, you now have the ability to incorporate, at least Yamaha does in the case of the Tracer 9, uh, KYB electronic suspension. And what's cool about that is it has the ability to change and adjust the compression and rebound for the KYB fork and the rebound for the shock on the fly during the ride. And there's different modes for the suspension you can do too. There's one and two. Uh, one is a dynamic suspension mode that the more aggressive you ride, the more it firms up the suspension. Uh, mode two is this constant curve of suspension uh, adjustment that uh, it, it pretty much stays level. You can't change it manually except for the preload. Now, during our ride, as cool on paper as the 
like dynamic electronic suspension setting sounds in practice that only works well if the road is really like billiard table smooth on the choppy roads around here in LA even up in the mountains the harder we rode the bike the firmer the suspension got and the more you felt like every jitter and bump in the road and the ride just got just really chattery so we bumped it down to suspension level two and it stayed constant the amount of damping level that it provides and so at least you know what you're getting into as you enter the corner the, the bike is going to perform the same way and have the same characteristics all the way through the corner so you can prepare for that and adjust your riding style to that whereas with the a1 setting the dynamic setting that ramps up the damping as you go faster you're kind of not sure like what the ride is going to deliver to you next it's still for a sport touring bike is a lot of fun to ride it'll these handlebars are nice and wide you can chuck it in the corners really well that three-cylinder engine gets you up going really fast the brakes not you know they're not like r1 level super high stomping power but it slows you down really well and then you can just tip it into the turn what else you got here cruise control you've got all kinds of adjustments for the rider comfort now this is kind of the point where we veer into the touring side of sport touring you can change the seat height uh, you have the standard seat and then you can just flip some blocks underneath the seat and make it taller you can adjust the handlebar positioning just by flipping some bolts on the triple clamp and the handlebar adjustment to make it either forward or backward and a little bit taller or shorter the foot pegs you can make them lower or higher as well there's just some pre-threaded uh, um, openings down there at the foot position higher or lower like this is a really off the shelf you can tailor it for all kinds of body sizes and heights and i'm i mean i'm 5'8 i'm pretty standard build i kept it in the low seat i kept the, the bars center position i kept the, the pegs nice and low and it was perfect for my for my taste this windscreen you can adjust with one hand up or down you can do it on the fly while you're riding i was able to do it although with the wind blast it gets a little bit difficult um, i had it in the low setting most of the time and for me, it flew, it blew the wind right over my helmet with very little buffeting. I know some of the taller guys on the ride, they like to put it up and actually raise the seat too. And at that point, they got the uh, wind blast like pretty much at their high port or over their helmet. So for most of us, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, there's an auto up down quick shifter too, which is really cool for a sport touring bike. It works really, really well. If I'm getting back into nitpicks about the bike though, the throttle pickup, there's four different throttle sensitivities. The first three give you full power, but just the initial pickup when you twist the throttle gets progressively, I guess, less powerful. With number four, like really cutting back the power and then it has less overall power too. Now, having just ridden the MT-09 recently, um, when you get on the power on the MT-09, it gets up and moves really well. And like the moment you ask for power, it just goes. And fueling on the old FJ-09 was really notchy, on off. With the MT-09, the new one, it's perfect. Buttery smooth, you want power, it gives you power. With the Tracer 9 GT though, when you crack the throttle open, even in the most powerful throttle mode, which is power mode one, you're waiting for like a little bit, just a split second, you twist the throttle and you're waiting for that power to kick in and you're like, come on, where is it? Oh, there it is. It's not abrupt, but there is a slight delay between when you get on the throttle and when the power is actually delivered. That was a little bit annoying, but once you get, I don't know, I think it's above 4,000 RPM, it moves and it moves really swiftly it's a lot of fun to twist that throttle and go of course you've got saddlebags that's part of the deal too it's touring obviously includes carrying stuff whether it's a passenger or your things in these saddlebags they're pretty spacious you can use the same key as the ignition uh they're, they're locked in place really well too um they don't rattle very much they don't rattle at all 
uh, we had some bumpy roads that we were riding on and some other mounting systems for these bags they kind of flop around like a wet noodle these stay in place really well my gripe about this though is it couldn't fit my medium showy helmet others were saying it could fit others that were also wearing like awry helmets medium size could not fit their helmets in these bags but there were other people who said if they twisted their helmet and like contorted things they could eventually get their helmet to fit inside so maybe i'm just doing it wrong your mileage may vary and if you have a small helmet or a small head then hey you might just happen to get yourself and get your helmet uh inside of that saddlebag you know that may or may not be a deal breaker for you but uh overall it's such a comfortable motorcycle to be on we did i don't know 150 odd miles today didn't really move much on this suede seat alcantara seat and it's really well padded i mean i didn't feel the need to move it was uh i feel fine i feel fresh other bikes i ride after i don't know 50 miles i want to get off and like stretch because it's so cramped and it hurts my butt but this thing feels pretty good overall an amazing sport touring package that builds off of what the mt09 platform starts and the tracer 9 gt just ramps that up another level for the sport touring crowd i'll be really excited when the mt09 turns into the r9 because the mt09 is a really cool bike won our shootout recently this tracer 9 gt is a really great sport touring package and that just has to lead to an r9 being an excellent sport bike package as well one of the other highlights of this tracer 9 gt it comes in under 15,000 bucks, 14,899, I believe it is. And for that price, you're getting a lot of motorcycle. Comfortable sport tour, 890cc, three cylinder that sounds great and makes really good power. Uh, quick shifter up and down is really awesome. Cruise control, a whole bunch of electronics to keep you safe, even when conditions get dicey. Just comfort and sport all wrapped into one like the definition of sport touring is right here in the tracer 9 gt really fun bike had a great time riding it a couple of niggles with it but definitely not deal breakers in the slightest so uh i think yeah that wraps up what i have to say about the yamaha tracer 9 gt for 2021 um i'm gonna go write a written story now for motorcycle.com so head over there to read my written thoughts about this bike where i can probably have a better chance to download my brain and put more clear thoughts onto digital paper but uh yeah the the cliff notes version is this is a cool bike if you're into the sport touring thing and uh, you're not going to go wrong if this is calling your name so anyway, one more time go to motorcycle.com read my written review there and uh yeah like subscribe do all that good stuff and until next time ride safe and i'll see you later mm -hmm.